Thanks, Zach. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Congratulations. So well, well deserved. Well, well, thank you so much. And, and President Pollock, thank you for those wonderful words. And I want to thank the Cornell community and all these wonderful people in the audience to take time out of their day to, to hear us chat. But uh, again, you know, Cornell was such a wonderful experience in, in a formative time in my life. And the School of Engineering was just, uh, uh, you know, frankly, one of the, 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 the elements that helped me actually think about solving problems in a very elegant way. So again, I'm deeply appreciative of all that Cornell has given me and hopefully I can give just a fraction of that back in some form or fashion. Well, I appreciate it and I, I, I concur with your uh, sentiment. So, <laughs> so hey, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's get into it. So we're right? not even yet? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> So it was interesting hearing about the path that you've that you've taken to becoming an entrepreneur, and just uh, you know, in terms of the Kraft General Foods, uh, moving on to getting an MBA, and then you know, some time at Goldman and so mm -hmm. forth, and you know, in many people's minds, you know, the standard pathway is through Silicon Valley, which mm -hmm. is which is quite a bit different, and I'm just wondering how you view your path and sort of vis-a-vis -vis the. The, the more, you know, the, what many people think is the way to becoming an entrepreneur. Sure. Um, you know, it's interesting. I, I remember when I was applying to colleges um, and I went to visit Cornell and Cornell had a wonderful program and I, I hope they still, you know, again, we've talked about it. It was called the Minority Introduction to Engineering. And I got a chance to visit the summer um, of my junior year in high school and spent a couple of weeks and really got to meet you know, really was TAs, professors, but really understand a little bit more about what was happening at Cornell, and it was a wonderful experience, and as many of you Cornelians may or may not know, summer is the best time to be in school at Cornell. <laughs> and uh, actually, when I designed the co-op program, it was because, you know what, I kind of don't like these winters in Ithaca, <laughs> and I can go to school in the summer, it was spectacular. Um, we used to tease, they turned the synchrotron on and kept the clouds away, and it was just beautiful. Um, <laughs> But I remember uh, when I was applying to schools and I got into a bunch of schools and, and uh, one of them was the school Stanford. I was put on the wait list. My mom said, well, you're gonna go visit? I said, mom, there can't be any more beautiful place than Cornell. I was there this summer, it was spectacular. And then like- And it's like that the whole year. 10 years later, I finally got out to the West Coast and went to Silicon Valley and I'm, just, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> what was I thinking? Uh, but. I have to tell you, uh, and I will tell you this, I will choose a Cornell engineer uh, over any engineering student that I, that I found. I've, I have the, 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 the great choice. No, no in, in, in all honesty, I mean, there, there, is, um, there is something about that experience. Uh, it, it, it's not just, the, Cornell believes in rigor, okay? And there's, there's a lot of programs out there that aren't as rigorous as our engineering program. Um, in, in engineering schools, while tough generally, uh, we bring a, a different degree of rigor. And beyond what I call the, the ability to solve complex problems, Cornell engineers have grit, okay? They actually come out with, with, a, with a tenacity and a doggedness that is enviable, frankly, uh, in the engineering community. And so, I actually, so just, yeah, yeah. If, I don't, if you don't, I'm just gonna mm -hmm. interrupt. I think those, uh, those hard winners are part of that grit. Yeah, uh, there's, there's no doubt. <laughs> We're not running don't around Don't do them every year. I mean, uh, <laughs> if you take a semester and go, go to Stanford for a semester, do it. But, uh, but to a great extent, I think, you know, that created a basis uh, that, that, that helped me understand the importance of sticking with problems and, and seeing them through. Mm. Um, and so while a number of people, you know, start school and go become an entrepreneur quickly, you know, I, I think finishing there, you know, working in industry for six years uh, really helped me. My, the world I live in is actually a confluence of two worlds and it just so happened that they, they work pretty well together today. One is technology mm. uh, and, and the other is finance. And you know, when I ultimately made a transition, uh, went off to business school, and I'll, I'll tell you about that in a second, um, where I learned how much these people made in investment banking was obscene. I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm a hardworking engineer. I was making $42,000 a year. I didn't think you made any more money than that in the world. Uh, and, and then some of my friends were telling me about what these investment bankers made. They're making hundreds of thousands. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I know these people. There's no way they could be worth this. <laughs> And I said, what is it that you do, you know? Because you're clearly not solving any world problems, right? No, they're creating them. Yeah. And, 
You know, in all honesty, and from that, when I looked at it, uh, and you know, so I started interviewing these investment banks and all that sort of stuff, and I said, and I literally, as an engineer, I literally had over 100 interviews because I was collecting data, mm. right? <laughs> I had no idea, sales, trading, you know, research, what do you people do, and, you know? <laughs> and the only business I liked was mergers and acquisitions. Okay, because I said, because with the exception of warfare, it's how assets get transferred across this planet, warfare and divor divorce, but you know, that's, <laughs> that's how assets get transferred across this planet. And that was interesting to me. Yeah. And if you think about it now, the confluence of technology and the confluence of, of, of finance and M&A mm. all kind of happened. And I was sitting here in New York at Goldman Sachs and sitting with my boss, Matt Keller at the time, and we were in, in Gene Sykes on the West Coast. He said, you know, we ought, to, we ought to start a tech group. And I said, you know, that's, that's probably a good idea. And I said, but if I'm you guys, I'm, I'm actually thinking you, you, you may get an engineer to start this tech group because uh, we don't have any other engineers in our department but me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got drafted. They said, that's a good idea. You want to go out to California? I said, oh, no, I would never do that unless you really convince me to do it. Uh, so I was our first M&A banker on the ground in San Francisco focused on technology. And I, I got the chance to work with this little company that we were, had some problems with the CEO and the board. We got rid of the CEO and kicked out the board and got this guy, Steve Jobs, to rejoin this company. It's called Apple. Mm. All right. Worked on a spinoff of Agilent Technologies from Hewlett Packard. Worked with a little company called Yahoo, a little company called eBay. And realized that the short answer is no one was doing buyouts in enterprise software. Hmm. Now, getting back to my Cornell days and my tech days, as a chemical engineer, which we all know the, the smartest engineers out there, but <laughs> as, as a chemical engineer, one of the things we focused on was really process controls, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, we weren't really developing any new unit operations. It was process controls. And I remember one of my first experiences where I was basically programming a TDC 3000 PLC and it created 26% productivity in the plant. And I was like, you know, software is and continues to be the most productive tool introduced in our business economy in the last 50 years and likely will be for the next 50. But no one was doing buyouts, sorry, in enterprise software. So that's where the idea came from mm. and said, you know, if you actually created a standardized process for not only doing the buyouts, but for creating value in these enterprise software companies, you could actually do okay. And that's the whole construct of what Vista actually is today.